Namo Adidapha. Good morning. This is our daily practice check-in for April 3rd, 2020. Listen, listen, listen. This beautiful sound calls me back to my true home. Today we're reflecting on the fifth wonderful precept. Aware of the suffering caused by unmindful consumption, I vow to cultivate good health, both physical and mental, for myself, my family, and my society by practicing mindful eating, drinking, and consuming. I will ingest only items that preserve peace, well-being, and joy in my body, in my consciousness, and in the collective body and consciousness of my family and society. I am determined not to use alcohol or any other items that contain toxins, such as certain TV programs, magazines, books, films, and conversations. I am aware that to damage my body or my consciousness with these poisons is to betray my ancestors, my parents, my society, and future generations. I will work to transform violence, fear, anger, and confusion in myself and in society by practicing a diet for myself and for society. I understand that a proper diet is crucial for self-transformation and the transformation of society. Continue our reading from Ajahn Suchito's Kama and the End of Kama. Awakening to Cause and Effect At first this vision of Kama seems to be one of imprisonment rather than liberation. But when you're in a jail cell, you start to investigate it more fully to see firstly how to make it more livable and then how to get out of it. Firstly, if we must generate kama, we can at least determine whether it will be bright or dark. Remember, there's a choice. Kama depends on mental volition or intention, whether this be a carefully considered intention or a compulsive drive or a psychological reflex. In this sense, intention is not just a deliberate plan. In fact, right at the heart of our conundrum is the fact that we're not always that clear about what we're doing and why. We may be operating on automatic or with blurred or biased attention, but still attending to and moved along by the push of a passion or a habit. For many of us, the main problem is not deliberate evil intention, but action based either on confusion, inattention, or misunderstanding. Many of our troubles come from being preoccupied or getting stuck in habits. Then we don't, clear attention, don't bring clear attention into association with our actions. Or we think things are okay, so why bother? Or that they're not, but we have no choice in the matter. But there is always a choice to at least investigate comma, and that's where the turnaround begins. This is because mental volition can be understood and directed if we give it wise attention. We can direct attention to our thoughts and impulses pause and receive them more fully, and thereby get a feel for the bright or dark quality that they bring into the mind. This helps us understand what to act upon and how. For example, a feeling for bright comma encourages someone who inherits good fortune, such as wealth or intelligence, to share it. They will then be making the best use of that old comma by turning it into bright new comma. In fact, for a person who doesn't share good fortune, the pleasure of it goes stale. 
Wealthy people who are selfish and complacent generally want more or get stingy and self-obsessed. As another instance, we can be experiencing the dark effect of being abused or hurt or anxious, but determine not to take it out on someone else, or start investigating and relaxing that mood, and perhaps learn what caused those effects. In this kind of action, volition is not moving towards some future state, but towards penetrating the present state. Penetration isn't a matter of understanding all the whys and wherefores of kama. In fact, the details of why we experience a particular mood or intuition or urge at any particular moment are too complex to understand, like trying to figure out which river or rain cloud gave rise to which drop of water in the ocean. The important point about penetrating kama is to enter the underlying currents of the mind and turn the tide of effects. And to do that, we need to cultivate an awareness that's firm, clear, and not flustered by moods and sensations. This recognition, based on right view, brings right aim, the activation of the Eightfold Path out of suffering and stress. One point that becomes clear about the current of the mind is that whatever way it's flowing, we tend to get bound up with it. We want to protect and sustain a happy state, and feel bad about its eventual decline and disappearance. Our identity gets based on that state. On the other hand, we feel stuck with and desperate about unhappy states. In this way, all kama gives rise to, defines, and psychologically locates us. Hence, even good kama has a certain disadvantage, because we still have an investment in the arena of kama. Within that arena, the wheel of fortune can turn downwards. We may be attacked, and will certainly suffer disease, pain, death, and separation. We may also get caught up with some overwhelming passion or impulse, and do something we regret for the rest of our lives. So the Buddha pointed to a better option, to get out of the arena. In other words, to deepen awareness beyond the range of kama and vipaka, this is the aim that leads to awakening and complete liberation. May all beings be well, may all beings be happy, may all beings be peaceful. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you for joining me this morning, and I'll be back with our daily practice check-ins on Monday.